Oh, uh, awesome. So you can ask more questions as you uh, as you go on. So I'm go ahead and um, um, I was second graders. Okay. So there's uh, Socrative is going to be super easy um, with or with the um, with laptops. Either one. So activity since I'm the third person in that group. So short answer here. Um, so those answers appear. Hopefully you saw that right up on the screen. Um, and then once I'm in that activity, you see that you're you're on your iPad or your laptop. Then back over here. That I need to start another activity. You stay signed into the room, so now I can go ahead and answer, ask another question. Okay. So that's the question. Um, you, uh, uh, well, I think with Google Forms, have you seen Google Forms used in the past? So then, as the teacher, then, then that, and that starts my activity. It's that, that quick. It's really nice. Quick way to get some feedback from students, and you'll see on your device that the student response. Um, they can go ahead and type in their response. For laptops, this is really nice way to then responders because they can actually type in the information. You can get a really good uh, feel of what's going on um, versus just in the the letter, or the you know the text that in. It's pretty that so um, the nice quick way to, to get those answers and the way that a student gets in is super easy they just go www.socrative or iPad or smartphone Android device they just use their um, that app and hit again one number and it's just my last name um, and hit join room so it's supposed to get in. Um, the forms takes a little bit longer to be able to get in, uh, but there's some that you can speed that up, uh, especially if they, if they know how to get to the website really easily or if they use um, the second, it might be a little more challenging to do that. Uh, the forms um, and Google accounts, because if they don't have their Google account set up, it might be a bit harder. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the Socratic teacher now and in the activity. Oh, the other thing is you can vote on responses. So hit vote on, oh, here, let's go through the, uh, and hit enter or submit. All right, and then I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to go and I'm going to say 75. I can stop here and hit submit. So sure, once again, these show up. And then I like to have these on, on another screen, or you could pick mute or freeze your uh, projector so that the kids can't see this and you can see it. And then if someone writes something inappropriate, the one problem with this is that you can't determine the short or the one question. Uh, you can't really uh, determine who says what. You have to go out their iPad. Actually, that doesn't even work. Once they submit, it disappears. So as a teacher, you can go ahead and X those out. Say, well, that one's really uh, okay, and that gets rid of that. Now, do is have the students vote in responses. Um, and then, oh, I need yours. I figured that. Um, I'll try again. Submit. Go back to the team. And he stops up again. All right. So now active answers to vote. I can go like this and close that. And then write vote on responses. Okay. See on my screen here. Here. I have, um, there we go. Vote on one of the two answers that's been submitted. So this is where you could say as as a teacher. The yeah, kinds of students that are, are uh, out there that vote. Um, so through and you have a bunch of different answers. Say, hey, one of those answers is correct up there. Then you're within your group or within your team. You want to talk about which answer do you think 
topic is right and why, and then have them vote. Okay, so that's been kind of fun too. That this is really more about um, higher uh, think skills. It's not just about getting multiple choice correct answer. And that's a really nice thing with Socrative is that you can you can with that work too and instead of just doing the multiple choice kind of thing. All right. Yeah. Some one for 75. I think yes is a good answer. Let me go there. Hopefully it'll show here. There's all right. So in that activity, and then so you do that with multiple choice too. So um, you know have a PowerPoint. Let's say that you have a PowerPoint or some a Prezi or something like that where in the middle of it you just want to get a real quick uh, whether or not understanding the concept, you can slide or a frame which has answers you know, A, B, C, D, and E, and then say, all right, go ahead now. as you're showing it, and say, all right, open up the Creative app, app uh, classroom, and see how you're doing, and hit this multiple choice, okay? And then multiple choice, there's four people in here, and on your screen, then you're going to get A, B, C, D, or E. And you can just add that, so it's just four responses, but it really doesn't matter. If you only put four up on PowerPoint, A, B, C, and D, hopefully no jokesters will do an E. You know that can happen, but so say I just, I'm just i just going to choose B, this one. And then really quick idea. Yeah. We're at based more content type thing. Um, not much concept. So this is a quick, you know, kind of lower order. Um, you're getting some definite feedback on whether or not they're understanding some of the content that you're teaching. So you throw that in. I'm just going to end this activity really quick, and then maybe go ahead and show a few more slides. After those few more slides are there, I have another slide that's prepared already with a multiple choice question with the different you know, four choices, and I can say, all right, we're going to multiple choice again. Bam, and away you go. So you can use the PowerPoint and this in conjunction or together with each other to get really quick feedback on whether or not the kids are, are understanding your concepts that you're teaching them. Um, all the activity. Oh, somebody's voting. Pretty good. So like I said, I really like Socrative. It's just fantastic. I've uh, used a few different meetings that I've um, that I've had, it just gets people engaged instead of having just one or two students. Um, in your class engaged, you'll have everybody engaged. And uh, it, like I said, it's uh, nice. It's cross-platform too. It's um, you know, you can do it, you can see you can do it on an iPad, a Droid device. I have it on my, my cell phone on my smartphone, um, and it's really handy because you can use it cross-platform too. All right. So now what I do is. Uh, I'm going to go to the teacher. I'm going to end this activity. And then go down to quiz based activities. In quiz based activities, you can do an exit ticket. I'll show you what that is. That um, there's a go room, and you can go ahead. Hopefully, it'll show up. But four questions, and this one actually gets names on it. This is kind of nice. So the student quickly enter a name, first name, last name. And I'm just going to get this so you can see there. And how to understand today's material, totally get it pretty well, not very well, and so on. So this is a prefab kind of thing. What did today? And I'm about to submit. And then if you board, you go ahead and do that. Uh, and then you say none. And then you have a limited number of iPads. But they can they can go ahead and let another student take the exit ticket, so they could pass it to the next person. So if you have iPads or whatever, they pass it to the next kid, and then we can start theirs. Okay, one completed exit ticket of six, and the exit tickets done. Then I can end that activity. So get some real. Uh, quick feed. I'm going to end the activity, and you'll see that you have choices. You can email the report or download the report. Um, and then I've typically been doing email the report instead of download the report. 
uh, because we've had problems with downloading the report actually coming through. So you could just I would do that on a practice one just to see if the report comes through. Um, I'm going to email the report to myself, and it's going to go to your email address that you've um, that you've set up with, and it goes in the Excel file. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay. Exit ticket. Base race is kind of fun. Um, I'm not going to go through that one, but you can run a quiz as a game, actually. So you have to do, take a pre made quiz and as a game. I create a quiz. So if I go to manage quizzes, rate two is you can say, you can shift this quiz. So that if you have colleagues that are the same concept, uh, and you, they want to, you, know, you want to create a quiz, you create a quiz together. Together, import the quiz by using this code. All right, I'm going to hit continue. Now. So I'm going to hit quiz. Um, enable sharing. So say give it. Let's just, just put in a multiple choice question. And I'm going to say what. Is your oh there are other questions? So I was um, Johnson was part of my last session, and so I'm just going to do red uh, and so and then check the correct answer. So it will self grade it too, which is kind of nice. All right, and and you can multiple you can do mark more than one answer, which is also kind of nice. I can add another question and. Away is the moon. Well, not very much content based stuff. Five miles, one million miles. So, if you forget to check an answer, correct answer, or don't put in information here, it'll prompt you and say that you're doing it wrong. And then go back and fix it. I'm going to give an answer here. The question is Did you learn today? Okay, put in the explanation. And the explanation is more of an answer. Um, open, and then I'm going to save this quiz. Ask me for a name. So see how it prompts you. If you forget something, it prompts you to go in there and, and fix that. So it's going to say webinar. Save that. So here, share that. So if you were to pull this quiz in, um, you would just this number, and you would go to import quiz. So you can go to import quiz, and then you can import the shared quiz. Once you hit that, you type SOC dash XXXX, okay? Um, number in, not the SOC, and then you hit import quiz. Then you can go ahead and share that with someone. All right, I'm going to go back now. Import one from Excel. So Excel template out there. Um, that can um, go ahead and you, you can create your quiz with there, and then you can import that um, quiz data. And it's really um, kind of nice. Uh, well, it says that. Well, that's a good point. Everything that I do with Socrative is all PC based um, because, as a teacher, anyway, because it's so much easier to create things with a PC uh, or Mac MacBook. That, but I are really kind of tricky to be able to do as much, um, you know, to create things. So, all right, let's go ahead and throw them in the chat, um, and then I'll try to answer them as we go along. I'll just keep plugging over here. All right, short quiz feature, which is really nice if you're working collaboratively. Good. All right, thanks, Brianna. Um, so these are tools here, and then see that you can quiz areas. Then now that webinar is in there, and I have my stored quizzes are down here. So here's waves and sound, um, which is, and you can. Look practice quiz and duplicate the quiz. So if you get uh, get answers for 
I guess you do the quiz. It doesn't. Um, I don't stores the answers from the class. If you have multiple sections of like for middle school, I taught four sections of science. So I believe to start it again, and then the data that gets sent to you at the very end. And, um, yeah, because it will be tied to the time that it was taken. So you can see on the screen here, this exit ticket was time. So I would know which class that exit ticket was for. Um, you can choose the exit tickets and the other quizzes. So here's all the different. You can go back here and see that this was at 445. I know that's my, uh, like my 15th hour class, maybe, I think. Um, <laughs> so it's after school is out or 3:45. Um, anyway, see that you, you can download that data, or you email it to you um, after two. So they they store these, these quizzes. And I don't know how back they go, but anyway, you get the idea on that. And you delete that quiz. Now this is in my account. I can start the quiz. Quiz I, I have, so I have webinar. I can register choices. Students taking these quizzes out there, you may want them to be, you know, in that different spot because the person next to them then will the same question at the same time. I put in just immediate feedback. So let's see if they got the right answer or not. Um, enable that and explanation. So it will not be shown. So you can choose those things. A student paced quiz or a teacher paced quiz. The quiz is, um, so as a student answers the question, they can keep on going along. So they have something that they're going to do after the quiz is over automatically when they're done. That would be a good one to use. But I really want them to be working on it and thinking about it together. Um, and you know, like maybe time it, give them 30 seconds to answer each question. You would run the teacher paced quiz. Face quiz is so we can go through this. And the actual, you, you know, they have to put in their actual name. So then I was going to Joe here. And then um, it, so you can see your name. So as the teacher, then, and the teacher pays quiz, I can see if people have turned their information in there. I can send the next question to students. And look to name. And then you get this. And then as it get the feedback right away. And then I can send question. Oh, all right. Andrea take off. He has another meeting. Okay, how far? So, those are the right answer, obviously. Question. Okay, and then open. And then I got the wrong answer. So that's the part. What did you say? So, once again, really, really nice because it's really quick. And the activity. And what really want to see is I could hide the live results, but if you're doing the T paste one, I think it makes sense to do that. I can't remember uh, the student paste one if you just get a, a long uh, wind questions and all their answers as you go along, as they go along, since it's self paced. And the activity, and again, I can email that report. So I'm going to go now that. I need to clean up first. But that. Oh, oh. Connected. Email. I'll come back to that. For soccer to how to do it. And then important, it's, it's a good idea that at the very end, well, two things. My, my profile. So the room number is Kuski. Yeah, I wanted to try to change some of that stuff um, and come up with one that's a little bit easier for students to get to. I can do it here. 
the email address and so on. Okay. Um, this is nice the tour. You can hit that and it'll, it'll guide you right through Socrative and add a lot of details that I didn't go through today. So that's another place. And their whole page has a lot of good resources too. And then the thing I really like about their site, I also have a, a professional development blog going on. Um, and that, if I go down, is an owner or this training, join the conversation. It's a There's a here, and then a whole bunch of uh, tips as tiers that you can use. Uh, so I go through, and you want to get even more um, um, proposing to crack them. Go ahead and use that resource. Oh, I got my email now. Go. Okay. okay. Here's that Excel report. report. Um, Stuff here. There we go. Excel report. And there we go. So, name there and so on down the line. Okay. Report. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then I'll give you a total score too, which is nice. So it's a quick way that you can, um, each student is doing, um, and then from there. All right, that you get emailed to yourself. Uh, well, any questions on Socrative? Oh, well, only have access to do Google Forms, but I think you'll get the idea of Google Forms. Kevin, okay, just uh, send them off to me here. All right, so forms. And Google forms is a teacher. Slide this over. So it's Google. Forms. Um, for you to do this, you just sign into your Google account. So go ahead and do this if you aren't signed in. And once again, at isd112.org address. So here I have a whole bunch of different, um, you can see the Google Forms icon by see this is the icon for the Google Form. I'm just going to do the side survey one that I did before. Here is, this is basically the result of it. If I want to edit the form, um, then I'm going to go here. But we'll start from the beginning. I'm sorry. I should have done the first place. So let's create. So you're along with me and create your own form. So we're going to hit and then I'm form. Okay? Into this form. If I go back to and you can see this is what a fine look like. Form. This is, this is what uh, um, Michelle and Eric Swanhorst used to get some feedback on their program with parents. So this is a survey they did with parents. That's um, the Alex program. Parents, or you can share it with students, uh, whoever you want. So you can use it as a straight-up survey, but I really like it as an assessment tool. Also, and you can customize it with some different themes and backgrounds and that kind of stuff. Okay, what the final form looks like. So I'm going to go to form. And, uh, title is and up here. You're going to do your titled form. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do a survey actually. This is a real one that I'm going to create. So um, webinars and training for pop. So I didn't really get some feedback on the webinars and training. So the first question is, have you attended the webinar? Up. 
So then in type, you can choose um, pair multiple choice and so on down the line. I'm doing multiple choice. All right. Um, when I say yes or no, there's a few options on this. You can make it a required question, which I'm going to do. And if a question where your answers are exactly the same, like strongly agree, agree, and strongly disagree is one that you can do, um, you copy that question or you can duplicate it. So I'm going to duplicate it here. All you have to do is go in and get rid of that and then type in your uh, different question. Okay. Um, I'm just going to just do the times um, for trains um, work with your schedule. I haven't thought about these questions at all, so I'm just making them up as, as we go. Okay. Once again, this is multiple choice. Um, but if, we're not going to get that deep in it, but there's a lot of different tools that you can use with the I to show you with Google Forms. All right, well, choice. And I want it to be a required question. And then what I'll do is go ahead and um, add it. Um, it. I can go ahead and do that. that to add, go up to where it says add an item. And then text. So I'm going to do title. Is what are some topics like? More. Okay. So the question is going to be a text and do paragraph text. Text is short answer more, and paragraph text give an opportunity to give a longer answer. Okay. And a required question. Okay. So this is really important. You do have to save the forms um, if it doesn't end up being, um, doesn't end up. And then the thing before I hit save, or I guess I can hit save here. Okay, save at the bottom. This is the link that actually gets them to the live form. Okay, so form this link right here. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to copy the link address. So that um, I want to go out and I want line page. I'm not going to do that, but I go out to headline page and I, I just. Um, put that link in on my headline page. So the students then would go to www. Let's go from that district one to, oops. Our teacher page. And then, um, you would put in here in the contents, you would put the link right here. So hit that link or over here. So they could hit that link and then they could go ahead and, and um, answer the questions. And if it's a parent, you could post that link out there so they you can get some feedback from parents on that. All right. So I'm going to save that. You can also email this form. Hit email. Now in the Google contacts. So if you have a Google group set up already, what you do is you can go ahead and type in, for example, Pioneer Ridge has some group set up. So PR. Um, what is it here? Chapman. Oh, do math. As you do a, a, a no, now what the classes are, but so if you do PRM, if you have classes set up, they're going to go ahead and appear in this list. If you had your tech associate or your tech help, help um, so Google as Google Groups, if you've done then these they will appear in this list and go ahead and email this out to your class instead of having them go to the web page. But then they would go to their Google, again, they they would go to their Gmail their email. And in the email, they'll get a notification that they received a whole bunch of these. I've got all kinds of these. This is a current event template. And elements are everywhere. So you can see teachers are doing this. So 
W. Nairn and so on across the board that they are including these these different classes and clicking on those. And these are just documents that they're sending out, but they would even email like this that says there's a Google form to uh, fill out. Okay. So okay. You can change the theme and this is the one that uh, Eric and um, Eric so you can change it and make it look fancy. There's the one that So up a little bit. Okay. All right, and then it's safe, so I don't think I have to do anything with that. Okay, go back to my Google. Here's my. I'm gonna go back to fresh that. that. That's my spreadsheet, my fault. If I go my five. Oh, really? Or up. Or up. Oh, my. I'm trying to. Back to editing. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to. Okay. And you can see questions come across the top. And then people enter their answers. They just appear right here, right down the line here. Okay. Now, how to share this with people? Well, now, this form right now is private only to me. Um, people can, can fill a form. Um, along, they can fill out the form, but only I can make changes to the to this, this form. So, um, but you have people collaborating. You can go ahead and, and share that with, you know, uh, with others or other people that you want to want to have add questions or have access to the data. You can so the people that can see the data are the people that you shared it with here. Okay. Um, so that's you find the data and then. If I go to my form, edit my form, you'll see another window. So my form. There's those up here that are really important. So here, you really want to pay attention to this because you allow users to edit responses. No. <laughs> Or they can enter responses. I think that's what it is, and go back into the form. Um, required in Carver County School sign in, so that limit it to just, just in our district, um, it's in our district that have a Google account. Um, Google account. You want to use this with parents? You have to check that and be okay on it, because then this link, then parents can answer it. Otherwise, they have to sign in to our Google. Google um, our district accounts, which they access to. And I like this one. It automatically collects their name, username. So this is, you know, once again, this is something where you'll automatically get their name show, show, showing up. I live here. And then Ross is in. If I go to spreadsheet, here their username is going to show up. Okay. Username is going to be their username at isd112.org. That way, um, Exactly his answer for what. So this here um, that you got information right away with that. So, um, so what you can do with the uh, my fault. You can do I do conditional formatting. You can look for answers, um, and so within here, what I can do is I can say. Okay, so I'm here. I think I have my column. And I do conditional formatting. Anything 10 with the color of being orange. Okay. 
that rule. Right in 10 miles, the back are orange. So let's say one of the answers was five miles. That's an orange. So you can have it automatically show. Here's Marky, and this is the correct answer. So you format correct answers in there in different colors so that you know that, that uh, they have the right answer or they don't. Okay. There's a program called Brew, and Brew will self correct it. It's a little tricky to work with. Um, I made a lot of improvements to it through the last several months. So something that I would maybe do another session if people are interested in, in doing that. So um, the, um, that's see if people have the right answer or not. And it's pretty easy just to look at the, the question and the answers and see how many people got it right or how many people didn't. I'm an expert or goo on Excel, but I'm sure there's other things you can do with that. Um, I know Chuck could probably tell more about Excel to write some different things that you can see, um, write answers pretty quickly. So that's it. So this would be, I think, as a, as a teacher, I would like to use this. This is one you could use as one where you have a bunch of different, you some mild answers from students. And because it automatically puts their username in, and then you can see all of their answers. So you can quickly get an idea of if students are understanding the concepts or not. It takes a little more time to set up, so it's something you have to prepare ahead of time for. Um, however, you could do this as kind of like for um, the uh, Socrative. If I do form and type in, what did you learn today? And then do uh, text save it. I can and auth responses and hit save. Okay, now, there's my address. If I copy this address and I website. Right here, a link that says exit ticket. So to your website, this, this um, hit that link. They sign in, so it wouldn't be open up to anybody. It'd be open up to anybody in the district. But you can then they get you the ticket, and then you'd be able to see very quickly back in your results when people. Say, what did you say? Here it is. And I forgot. I have, you have to X that one out, otherwise it automatically appears. It's kind of a pain. But and then you can do this file, and after class is over, you can save this as, you know, first class. Save it into your user folder, and then um, you can clear out all the answers. Um, oh, you can show that right now. But the other thing I like is that you can show a summary of responses. So go back to. And then we'll that. If I go down the science survey, oh, labs for education over here. Good one. This is the one that was done um, um, done for the um, East Google. So if we go to, to some of the responses. So you can get a really quick feel as to what sessions that you want to going to attend and then here are their different kinds of topics and the responses. So this is a super fast way to get real quick feedback. So if you have a multiple choice question, easily see if the majority of the class is getting it or not. Uh, like this tool, you get and you can go um, Seeing more, you know, kind of data from the class, or you go back, back and specific answers from specific people. Okay, In Google Forms. There's a ton more that we could do with Google Forms. But Anna, do you have any questions at all? Popping in, popping out here. Okay. Oh, this was helpful. Um, you know, answered how you could use it with second graders.
Uh, Greater Socrata would be a great way to start out with if you have no devices. And the forms, um, if you have anything that's a little bit longer, uh, let that link right on your website, and then it can navigate pretty easily to your website. And then they get that, and then that Google form comes right up. The big second graders would have to sign into their accounts and things like that, and they come set up. So I'm not where you're at on using Google products right now, but you know, as you can always add that. So good. Thanks, Dave. Um, if you have any, know, and uh, okay, I'm going to end with anything else. Not to figure out, it's in here someplace.